everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my first bullet journal and the mistakes that I made. I recently finished my first ever bullet journal and looking back there are just so many mistakes which is fine because I can just chalk them up to experience my next bullet journal but I just wanted to share them with you so that you don't make the same mistakes as me. So my first mistake which is probably my biggest mistake is just how I laid my bullet journal out. So what I thought to begin with was that I would do my daily, weekly and monthly tracking beginning pages and then what I did was I split my bullet journal in half equally and thought right here I'll start my collections. Now the problem with that was daily tracking quickly caught up with my collections so I then ended up jumping around the bullet journal which just didn't work for me. So if we go back to where I started my collections which is here. Now I got here in December, I managed to catch up with myself, and now we're in April. So what I had to do was go to the back of my collections, leave a small gap for more collections, and start off my dailies again. So I was kind of using up the final few pages of the bullet journal. So what's ended up happening is I've got my daily and monthly tracking all the way up to the centre of the book. Then I've got some of my collections. And then I've got a pretty large gap full of empty pages, which I left for more collections. And then I'm back to dailies again, which fills the rest of the book. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, mistakes can be made and you can jump around all the book, but I just found it a bit frustrating at the end because I thought, well I wanted all my dailies in one place and my monthlies and weeklies. And I also wanted my collections in another place of the bullet journal. What I've learned to do for next time is I'll start my dailies from the front of the book, like I did last time. But instead of splitting the book in half, I'll just start my collections right at the back of the book. And then when they do finally meet, we two groups. And I don't have to dot my daily, weekly, monthly logs all over the book. So that's one of my biggest regrets, I think, with this bullet journal. Just because I feel really wasteful because there's so many blank pages to sort of all chunk together now. And I could fill them with collections and I could still fill them with things. But I'm just kind of, I've lost hope with it now. I'm just at a point now where I just kind of want to start fresh and I don't want to keep jumping around the book. My second mistake, which was quite a big one, I made when I first got the bullet journal and I didn't really know much about it. So I bought some new pens and unfortunately they leaked through the pages. Now obviously I didn't make this mistake much because once you can see a page has seeped through, you don't tend to do it again. But this page is the worst for it. Now this is my month to month and on the back of here is my yearly view. As you can see on this left page here, it's particularly bad. It's completely seeped through and I just think it completely destroys the whole polished look of the bullet journal. So I stopped using that pen after it did that but once that mistake was made I kind of wanted to rip the page out and start again but that would just be really wasteful. If I ripped out a page every time I made a mistake then I'd have no pages left. So I did kind of stick with that but I did learn from that mistake and I didn't do it again. As you can see I got a new pen and they didn't seep through as much. I mean, lectern journal pages are quite thin, so it is really difficult to find pens that don't seep through. The pens I now use are the Scribblicious pens. You can get loads of different kind of pens online, but I found that these work for me, and they were pretty cheap as well. I think I got them from the works, and I don't remember how much it was, but I got a huge multi-pack full of loads of different colours, and the one I use for my everyday writing in is the black version that came with the multi-pack. So that's kind of what I stick to. I recently bought a fountain pen, just a cheap one, off Amazon. I'll do a little test on the back to show you how much it does leak when you use quite a thick pen. This has been my kind of tester page, just to see if ink leaks through. And as you can see, it more often than not does. So I'll just write hello. <laughs> as you can see here, it has leaked through quite a lot. Just that little word of hello. I didn't push particularly hard, that was just completely normal writing. And unfortunately it does leak through, so it's quite a shame really, because I want to start writing with a fountain pen. But I don't think I can do it in the lectern just because it seeps through. So I'll have to try and find a way around that. If any of you have found any decent black plain pens, like fountain pens, that I could practice calligraphy in in my lectern that won't seep through, please link me below in the comments because I'm absolutely dying to get a good fountain pen that I can use for my lectern that won't completely ruin the aesthetic of the bullet journal. My third mistake that I made, I made throughout the entirety of my bullet journal. And this one isn't anything to do with how it looks, but it's more to do with the upkeep of my journal. 
Now in my last video, which I'll link below, I absolutely swore by this weekly setup because it's got everything you need on here. So it's got the day-to-day -day tracking. I did have it originally the temperature and sort of like weather tracking as well, but I got rid of that because that became a bit much to do every evening. And then I have my to-do list down here. And then I've got my meal plans. I only write down dinner just because I have the same breakfast and lunch every day, so that seemed a bit pointless. And I don't track my dinner on the weekends because it completely de depends on my plan. I've got my sleep tracker here, my fruit and veg tracker, my water tracker, which I will say was an absolute godsend and really made me think about how little water I was drinking. So every one of these signifies a glass of water. And to my knowledge, you're supposed to have at least eight glasses of water a day. And I really, honestly, I never hit that, which is obviously really bad. So that made me more aware of how little water I was drinking. I've got my to buy list, which is just kind of, it's never really things that are like, I really have to buy, but it's just things I'm eyeing up just so I don't forget. And then I've got a normal tracker here. So I write an X every time I've completed something. So I've got no spend, planning tomorrow, and that means planning in my bullet journal, uh, working out, blog work, bed by 11 p.m., which as you can see never happens, eating breakfast, scheduling tweets, me time, reading, and writing out PR requests on Twitter so that I get some collaborative work on my blog from brands. And then next week, just to jot down any important things I shouldn't forget for next week, and then a jotter. I think it worked really, really well for me at the time because I had a job that didn't really require much thought after work, if you know what I mean. So after I left work, I wouldn't think about work again until the next morning when I was at work again. I didn't really take any work home with me and I had a lot of free time in the evenings, ignoring blogging and everything else. I had the time to do this every evening. But now I'm in a job that I view as a career job, so something I'm really passionate in and I want to make a future in. I'm spending more time thinking about my work or planning for the next day. And also, because my work is arguably, I think, much harder now, I'm much more tired in the evenings, and the thought of sitting down and, at least on a Sunday night, drawing all of this out from scratch. Um, I don't have a template, so I'm not copying it out. I'm like counting all the lines and then drawing these little squares and all the rest of it became really high maintenance and it became a task to sort of dread rather than something to look forward to. So I think for my next bullet journal, I'm definitely gonna find a way to simplify this. I might have a look on Pinterest to see some more simple but effective weekly plans. Just something that I can kind of get on board with but not stress too much about the layout because although I love the layout of this and I love how smart and sleek it looks, it's just a bit high maintenance sometimes. As I say, at the time it worked for me, but towards the end I just definitely lost my passion with it and I got much lazier with it. It all looks good, but you know, there were times where I wasn't even drawing it out till the Tuesday and then kind of writing up from the past. And I don't think that's very good. I think a bullet journal should be something you look forward to and something you enjoy doing, not something that becomes a chore and something you dread for the next day. My fourth mistake with my bullet journal was leaving blank pages or making blank pages. Because I did a bit of a weird layout design, I started leaving blank pages to save room for things like collections. So when I'm thinking about collections, an idea will come into my mind, but maybe it'll take a bit of sort of organisation and a bit of time to actually lay out that page. So what I'll do is I'll put a sticky note on it and write what that page is going to be for. But as you can imagine, when that happens, I've done it here in pencil as well, when that happens I kind of just never get back round to it again. And so that's a big regret of mine, because if I flick through my bullet journal, I've done it again there, when I flick through my bullet journal, all I want to see is full pages, but sometimes there are just so many half empty or empty pages, I find it really frustrating. I just want to see a nice full page full of things, not loads of blank pages as I'm flicking through, because I just think it kind of ruins the aesthetic of it again. And also I just feel really wasteful, because as I've said, I'm moving on to my next bullet journal, but there's so many blank pages in this, but I just don't have the heart to fill them, because I would want to start my new bullet journal now, so yeah. If I were to do it all again, I would not worry so much about planning collections and, you know, if I felt the need to write a collection, I would just do it rather than planning for it and then saying, oh, I'll do that at some point and just never get round to it. So that's another one of my mistakes, planning ahead and then just never getting round to it and leaving blank spaces. Fifth mistake refers to an actual just one page and the reason I've designated a whole mistake to one page is I'll show you it's just really really poorly laid out so this is my monthly page views for my blog and I think you can see the big mistake here I don't know 
<laughs> I don't I just don't know what I was thinking so the bars across the side I mean they're fine I probably I don't know why I did that because I honestly prefer bars going up and obviously when bars are going down the side it also makes more room but there we go and I decided when I made this page to track my monthly views by month obviously because it's monthly but as you can see I mean a bullet journal probably lasts a maximum to a year I made mine in September so what's that like nine months so you know I was never really gonna fill this up very much so I don't know why I kind of just did one square for a whole bar when I could have made them really thick pretty bars at the bottom if you know what I mean and made the bars their thickness could have been determined by how many views so if it was a good month it could have been a really thick bar and blah -de blah and also I left so much room here and I don't know why because this is my first one that I tracked was 933 really don't know what I was thinking because I was never going to progress to that really was I within a year so yeah I think next time I need to have a really proper rethink of how I'm going to lay this out just because I hate this page it really angers me as you can see I haven't even filled in April obviously lined it out and just thought ah I'm sick of it so this is one of my biggest regrets in my bullet journal because it's just really, it makes me really angry to look at. I just obviously was not thinking, I was probably watching TV when I mapped it out and it shows it's just really poorly designed. My sixth bullet journal mistake is my to read list. Now I see beautiful to read lists all over Pinterest and that's the reason I started it. And as an English literature graduate, I'm really passionate about reading. I've always got a huge list of things that I want to start reading that is not reflected in my to read list. So as you can see on my bullet journal, my to read list is completely empty almost. But I do have so many books down here at the bottom and I think half of these I've actually read now. But I haven't even bothered to colour it in because I hate this page so much. I really like the idea of the rose gold washi tape bookmarks. However, I don't like that it's just a straight line. I wish I'd done some more borders and made it actually look like a bookshelf. I really like Gemma's Stick It up here. But I hate this stupid book book holder border that I've done here and I don't like the font here I think you know this O is really big compared to some of these letters over here I know this has been me being really anal but it just really frustrates me and also I've just why have I made the books just so tiny I would never I'd have to fill this with a whole library worth of books I really don't know why I was so ambitious this layout really frustrates me because I see so many gorgeous to read lists on Pinterest and this just it's it makes me feel ashamed I just don't want to even I would never pin this page I would never put it on there it's just no I just really don't like this page at all so when I start my new bullet journal I will definitely be redesigning rethinking the to read list page and actually be following it up and coloring bits in when I complete them because I'll actually be proud of that page now my seventh mistake is one that I made quite recently and in hindsight it was a big mistake but at the time I mean it's one of those things that you learn from and you kind of think I'm not gonna beat myself up about it just because I really didn't know so this next mistake is when I created my goals for this year I completely underset them now I'm sure a lot of us do this because we want to be able to tick things off and color things in our bullet journal so we underset goals in order to actually tick them off but that's not a very productive way of setting goals if anything you should be over setting them in the hopes that you'll achieve that and surpass it not under setting goals and thinking oh well at least I'll get to color it in and it won't look bad so I really like my goals layout I really like the fact that I've done one for each of my social medias and I've done it exactly the same format and it's a really nice graph but as you'll see not with all of them but with quite a few of them I've completely under set them now part of it is because that form of social media I grew a lot randomly but part of it was also because as I said before I was under setting them on Pinterest as you can see I have absolutely like this is supposed to be the goal and I've, I've surpassed it already and we're only in May so this is quite ridiculous actually and the reason this happened I think it's not my fault I think on Pinterest I don't know why I think they changed the algorithm I don't know but recently I have noticed my following is growing a lot on Pinterest which I'm obviously really really happy about that's good news but I haven't really put that much more work into Pinterest if you know what I mean this isn't really in my mind it's not a reflection of how hard I've worked on Pinterest I think this is a reflection of the algorithm so that's a bit frustrating obviously I want these followers and I'm really really glad I have them but it does mean so before how I was tracking it is by 10 so I was kind of expecting to grow 10 followers a month as you can see in March I just grew by about 100 followers 
which you know is very different from 10 you know I've grown 10 times what I normally grow in a month so that's really really good but also it means that I have zero room so yeah I definitely need to change my expected growth on Pinterest for next time now this is the funniest page of all I, I just really don't know what I was expecting with YouTube I made this when I started my YouTube so I really didn't know what to expect in terms of following so I think I created my YouTube in December and I think I got like 15 followers in the month so I decided to track it by 15 thinking oh well this is how quick I'll grow which was a bit stupid in hindsight because when you start with your blogging people tend to try and find you on social media and follow you on all your social medias and it just took a little bit of time I think for people to find my YouTube so absolutely brilliantly I've completely soared but I've not even just surpassed my 2017 goal of 180 subscribers I've gone all the way to the top of my bar which was 240 followers and I've run out of room so <laughs> I'm obviously really really pleased but I clearly need to rethink the growth scale with YouTube but again hindsight's a wonderful thing and in my new bullet journal I'll just know how to map that out so that is the end of this video and the end of my bullet journal mistakes. I'll soon be making a video with my new bullet journal. I might even film me creating some pages for you. Do let me know in the comments if that would be something that you would be interested in. But I'll also be doing a sort of flick through of my new bullet journal and the new layout. If you have any links to any sites on bullet journaling or any Pinterest boards, please do link me because I am just bullet journal obsessed. If you have a channel dedicated to bullet journaling as well, please do link me below. And also let me know if you like this video and if there's any other bullet journal content that you would like me to cover in this channel. I love talking about mine, I just feel like I'm boring people sometimes. <laughs> so if you do like bullet journal content, please do let me know. Don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up, to subscribe to this channel and to leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.